Square Enix just announced a brand new Guardians of the Galaxy game coming this year, October 26th already. I was able to get a presentation of the game before the reveal with a ton of extra info. So I want to share everything I learned in this video. A like would of course really help me out. And let's go. After Marvel's Avengers, it's good to know that this Square Enix Marvel game will be a single player story driven adventure without any microtransactions whatsoever. Everything that the game has to offer will be available at launch, all the outfits, abilities, everything should be there. So. That's really good to hear. There will be pre-order outfits though, like the Throwback Guardians, which look awesome by the way. And if you get the Cosmic Deluxe Edition, you have Sun Lord and the City Lord outfit for Star Lord. So apart from those, everything should be earnable in the game. And yeah, you saw the focus on Star Lord there already, because we only play Star Lord in this game. This is Idols Montreal's original take on the Guardians. They've been together for less than a year now. And the story takes place several years after a massive galactic war, and the universe is still kind of dealing with the repercussions of that. So the idea is that Peter Quill, Star-Lord, brings the group together to make some money as a hero for hire. And then because of a silly bet between two of them, no specifics were given. But yeah, a small accident happens that eventually takes a life of its own, gets bigger, and actually has a bigger impact on the galaxy than they fought at first. So this threatens the universe and now the Guardians have to take responsibility and stand up to it. Like, that is the broad story that was described to me and should be enough reason for us to visit different planets, meet familiar and new characters. But I really think the highlight of this game will just be the Guardians themselves. Like, I'm really impressed by the writing we've seen so far. They constantly make fun of each other, are sort of arguing, but in a very fun, playful way. Man. What about selling Gamora's crap? What? Oh, come on. You've been hoarding them stupid knickknacks ever since you first joined us. I mean... Don't tell me they ain't worth nothing. The quarantine zone was always holding out on My figurines are not knickknacks. Huh, team's in trouble. And you can't be bothered to make no sacrifice. Like, this should make our journey through the galaxy way more enjoyable. In the gameplay demo, we see them landing on this planet and it's raining. Something that in many games would not be that exciting or interesting at all. But I love how they turned it into this fun back and forth in this game instead. Hey, is my jacket all right? At least you got a jacket. Some of us are soaking here. Less whining, more walking. Hey, Stormlord, we ain't seriously walking through this. It'll take forever in this storm. Stop complaining. The hardship will strengthen your spirit. I face more than enough hardship. Thank you very much. And what should also keep us engaged in the story is the fact that you as Star-Lord, the leader of this group, have to make choices that will impact the gameplay. Like Drax wants to throw rockets to the other side here so he can activate the bridge for the other guardians to cross. But Rocket doesn't want Drax to throw him because it will obviously hurt. In the demo we see the player choose to let Drax throw rockets and then we see the text Rocket is furious that you let Drax throw him appear on the screen. So kind of Telltale style, hey, this character will remember what you did. The developers noted that your choices can have a small impact on, for example, the challenge at hand, or it can also affect some bigger scenarios in the game. And I totally think that if every choice negatively impacts one Guardian, that they maybe might turn against you in the end, which could be very interesting. It is worth noting, though, that the beginning and the end of the game will be the same for everyone reason being because they're building a very strong climactic ending that's according to square and they want everyone to see that so maybe the choices impact your allies at the end and maybe even which guardians are still around so yeah the fact that we are only playing star lord of course also has a significant impact on the combat as star lord you have your jet boots blasters we see him slide here in slow motion. He can also at any point give commands to other guardians. And every guardian seems to have four abilities you can choose from at any given time. Linked to each face button. We select an attack for Gamora here first. After which we cannot select her abilities again. They seem to be on cooldown when the character wheel comes up again. Other abilities we see in action are Drax who like charges towards the enemy. 
Groot has, for example, an ability to hold an enemy in place, and Rocket, of course, has some explosive attacks. At the end of an encounter, you also get XP towards only Star Lord or maybe your whole party. I'm overall really getting Final Fantasy vibes from this. And you, as Star Lord, by the way, also have quite a lot of options like different ammo type and also this special ability when a certain bar is full, which seems really powerful and has you hover in the air for a long time while an 80s song is playing. And just like for the other Guardians, you also have four abilities in a special wheel to choose from, but overall I wished we could control the other characters in combat too. That it was more like Final Fantasy VII Remake, where sure, we only play Clouds, but during combats, you can switch to the other characters. They did show a ton of interesting moves in a compilation of things that happen later on in this mission. So I hope there's enough to keep the combat interesting and varied over the course of the game. But with the XP system and the amount of abilities we already saw, I'm sure there will be a lot to upgrade and unlock. And maybe you already noticed it and I totally expect to see some comments about this too. And that is that the graphics could still use some work for a game that is coming out in 2021. Like sure the character models and the cutscenes look great, but the environment and the enemies are kinda rough. And I already asked Square Enix before the reveal on which platform the game was running for the gameplay presentation, but they could not say. Like I think that's important to know because when I look at some of the screenshots they released as well, the game looks actually way sharper and colorful than in the demo. It's clearly still a cross-gen game which has to run on the OG Xbox One and PS4, so I hope they give us a good comparison in the future because I cannot imagine that the gameplay that we're seeing here is based on PS5 or Series X footage. And also I really want to get my hands on the controller because while there seems to be quite some depth in the combos you can use, the animations still look a bit clunky. Again, maybe it feels better to play, but seeing the feedback when you hit the enemies and some of the stutters here and there, I'm just not 100% convinced yet, but they still got some time till release, so I am totally optimistic, especially because I'm already in love with these Guardians of the Galaxy. Also in terms of look, the helm and the jacket from Star-Lord are just awesome. They really wanted to give away the vibes that this is a guy, of course, stuck in his childhood, which was in the 80s. So, totally again, expect a lot of Kiss, Iron Maiden, Wham, Blondie type music in the game and also during the action. For Gamora, they really wanted to focus on the fact that she's the deadliest woman in the galaxy and that's why we see her in this full tactical body armor. And Drax is all about his unique markings on his skin that basically tell the story of his life. And Rocket and Groot come as a team and the armor we see Groot wear is so that Rocket can jump on his shoulder and start shooting. And we actually see a small Groot in the goatee from Rocket. So that's kind of how they are connected together. And of course in the cutscene we see their bond as well. I already can't wait to see more of this gang as we get closer to the release on October 26th, 2021. Hopefully we see more exciting enemies than the blobs we saw in the demo too. Like this of course just a reveal and we've only scratched the surface I'm sure. And also no words on how long the game is going to be. Sure it might have some replay value thanks to the choice system. But I'm still curious about how that will work. How we earn outfits. Like many questions. And when we get answers to that, I will of course let you know here on the channel. So totally subscribe for way more Guardians of the Galaxy content. A like on the video would really help me out. If there's already another Guardians video up, you can watch it by clicking on the screen. Otherwise, you will see my live reaction to the Square Enix live event, which also included the Guardians reveal by clicking on the screen. For now, I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.